Hey there, welcome back to another Touch Designer tutorial. Today we're gonna to be looking at creating this sort of effect, uh, but this time we're gonna be doing it without a connect and just a video input device, like a webcam or a video recording. Um, forgive me, I'm still sick. If I'm touching my nose or about to sneeze, that's probably why. So today's video is a bit of a part two. Um, so we're not gonna go through exactly like we did last time, step by step. If you want to do that, um, go ahead and look at the previous tutorial and follow that through. And then this one will essentially explain how we're going to, instead of using a connect camera, so a three or a 3D camera, we'll use a 2D camera to create this effect um, and explain the techniques behind that. Uh, if you guys left, lots of people left comments on my Patreon asking how to do this. And I mentioned with a UV map, this is that tutorial essentially. And it should be worth noting that this project file as is, um, is available for download on my Patreon. And if we have time in this tutorial, I might try and make this audio reactive as well. So, um, let's go ahead and explain what it is that's going on here, just so we understand the difference. So in a Kinect or a 3D camera, we are able to extrapolate depth information and then combine that with the input incoming image or threshold of a person to create a three-dimensional um, representation of them in particles. With a regular camera, we don't have that 3D information. And essentially what we need to do is create a 2D plane in 3D space and then set the three dimensional values, so our Z axes, to be equal to this face as well as this threshold so it can fly off in three dimensionals. So as you're looking at me right now, the limitation to this effect is obviously I look far more 2D and as I reach out, it's a bit of an illusion effect rather than me actually reaching out in 3D space. Now, if anyone is curious, I also want to work on a tutorial where I pretty much would recreate this effect, but using the iPhone LiDAR camera to stream that information to Touch Designer. I've already done it. It's just whether or not people want a tutorial on that uh, would be good to know. Um, and it would, yeah, mostly be very good for people with Macs who don't have support for um, Xbox Connect, at least uh, the later versions. But... Um, at the very least, where this should work for all systems today. Cool. So, essentially, most of what we're going to do, I'm just going to hide my background so I don't have to keep looking at my face. Um, essentially, what we need to do is we need to get the video device in. So, you can do a video device in or drag and drop um, your camera. And so, I have my webcam here. We're gonna get that information and we're gonna to need to uh, use a threshold to get the silhouette like so. Now, before this threshold, I have it connected to a NVIDIA background top. So when you right click um, and go NVIDIA background right there, it's worth noting that that doesn't exist obviously on Mac computers and it doesn't exist on um, obviously non NVIDIA graphics cards, uh, computers. It's cause it, uh, yeah, it, it's a top specifically for that, or that removes your background. So if you don't have access to that, you may just need to do a regular threshold, um, and then set it to like greater and then find, uh, the point, maybe, sorry, I'll connect that one in or less and set that to luminance. Sorry, I've been playing with a lot of these values. And then you can see here that, um, it's picking up a lot of my background. You just want to sort of play with that threshold as you see fit. Obviously, if you use a green screen, um, that will be significantly better. But um, if you have access to this NVIDIA background, connect that in. Uh, leave that set to quality. Then we want to connect in our threshold, like I said. If you're not using the NVIDIA background, you will just want to set the parameters, play around with it yourself. Otherwise, I've brought the threshold down a little bit, set the comparator to less. I've also set the RGB to alpha because the output of this NVIDIA background is the alpha. And then also on the common output, I changed the pixel format to 32 bit flow RGB. So we're sending this as a mask rather than a alpha. 
cool. So now um, we should have a silhouette of ourselves, or at least a silhouette of some sorts. We want to combine um, that with our original video device in, so using a comp, like so. Uh, composite, like that. Drag them both in, um, and do a multiply, and you should get a result like that. Uh, then I'm putting this into a fit. Now the reason why I'm doing a fit is because I need it to match 256 by 256 resolution. You can sort of pick whatever resolution you want, but 256 is honestly like super fine for the fact that we're mapping it to a bunch of particles. Uh, I've also translated mine, but that's just because my camera is off center a little bit. Uh, I've then done a flip. Uh, you'll need to connect that in and set the flop to bottom left. That just rotates it in a way where the work with the UV mapping and the color mapping that we're going to do. Cool. And then we want to connect it out to two different streams. So let's do the top stream first. So I have another threshold here. Um, this is cause we're going to use this mask to get the 2d plane. Um, so you just sort of really just need to set the threshold, uh, parameters like, so I just picked a value very close to, zero but obviously not zero um and then connected that out to a multiply top like so and put it into the second input now for the um uv map up here uh a lot of people will probably already know what this is but if you haven't created one of these before we'll just go ahead and do it ourselves now so we want to get a ramp like so connect that into a flip like so set the flop again to bottom left and then connect these two into a reorder um, so if we do a reorder like that and then plug this into one and then plug this one into two now to briefly explain what's going on again I'm not going to get too much into the complicated in-depth explanation of it all but we want to create a RGB um, combination like this where it uses the red green for if I go on instancing red green for X and Y in a 3d grid and then blue for the Z displacement so we essentially want our video mask to be equal to or at least the um, intricacies like that be equal mostly to the blue values and then the yv um sorry the xy to be equal to just a flat 2d plane which is what doing this does so in the reorder we need to set the output green to input two set the output blue to zero because again we don't want any blue coming from this and we can leave the alpha as is then when we connect that into the second bit of the multiply you can see here now that we're getting a silhouette. Now, if you don't want, if you want the grid, so the background, like a plain background to be there, you can skip the step, but I feel like having no background is quite nice. Uh, and then if we go back to our original flip here um, with this color, we want to connect out a second output going into another reorder. And then here in this reorder, we want to set the red and the green to zero. And then our uh, output blue obviously blue and then alpha alpha so what we've done is we've essentially got here a little mask with like a little bit of um, difference in color and blue values and um, you see like the darker parts of me are different shades of blue and then we have a silhouette in red and uh, green and then we combine these in a comp I've done an ad here but you can play around with different oper operations like I'll show you later and this essentially gives us a like instancing mask of ourself in a sort of faux 3d reality uh using this blue mask here you can obviously play with a level or math operators to change the z displacement z axes displacement but we're not going to do that and uh and instead we just want to at this point connect it in in the other tutorial to the start of the feedback loop so the null right before the feedback or straight into the feedback like so um, and yeah that's pretty much it everything else should be left as the same I think maybe I've adjusted the camera as well um, if you're 
if I pull up the background, if your um, device is like up and to the left, you want to probably set the camera to translate 0.5 and then 0.4 or 0.5, depending on the placement. Uh, but otherwise, that is essentially um, how to create a faux version of what we did in the last tutorial, uh, where we sort of, you know, create a 2D displacement of what we were doing. Now, if I have this up and I go back to this reorder, you can see here that when I put, change it to a top, so if I just do the red green mask here, it's, it's completely 2D and we lose all of that depth because we don't have the blue element coming in. But then when we bring in the blue element, we get a bit of depth displacement going on, which is instead of actually being based off of the depth, like the depth camera uses, it's using the color source, so like just the lighting on my actual face to have different blue values and then displace them on different axes. Uh, if I brought in noise here, for example, uh, that's probably way too much. Uh, if I need to uh, bring that right down. Uh, like so you can see here it changes like the well, um, the Z axes but obviously it's really hard to see the 2D planes the same you can sort of see that how when I move around um, but yeah I'm just gonna press 1 to get rid of that uh, feedback that is pretty much the whole tutorial now I'm gonna attempt to make this also audio reactive just in case anyone is curious about that I thought I might as well add a little bit more into this tutorial and something new for people watching but uh, if you guys are curious about the iPhone one let me know that will be a bit of a more complex tutorial as we'll need to do some things outside of touch designer but whether or not I get that recorded in the next month or so is to be seen as I'm about to travel so if I'm away for a little bit apologies um, I will get straight back on tutorials when I am back so if we want to do some audio reactive elements, we essentially might just want to control this noise. And if I start playing around with this noise configuration, maybe I don't like that too much. Maybe I want to connect in a second noise. Keep triggering the reset. What I'm doing right now is just wanted to give a demonstration on like sort of, I guess, creative thinking for people that aren't as familiar with touch designer um, a lot of people that have a very experienced in the software obviously can set out to make something from scratch and sort of know what it is that they need to plug in but when you're following a tutorial and sort of want to you know divulge diverge it into something of your own you don't really know what to do and sometimes just sitting here and playing with these knobs and seeing how they behave like that, you might go like, oh, I like that. So let's make that audio reactive. So I like that. And I'm going to go ahead and get a um, audio device, uh, audio file in, which will just be our default one. I connect this to an audio device out to hear it. I'm going to disable that though, because I don't really want to listen. I'm going to use under the palette up here, go tools and then audio analysis, drag and drop that in. Um, Again, someone left a uh, comment in my last tutorial about the Bloom um, operator under, or top, I should say, uh, versus the older one and the image filters up here. Uh, there's a few instances like that where some of these tools are maybe outdated or they've like compressed it down into a singular thing. And same with audio analysis. There's a lot of different ways to do it. I think these tools are just like, they have really good UI they have lots of different variety and variety and options. You can also dive inside of them and uh, learn a lot of the understandings um, of how they work. They're really well structured and laid out. I think they're really good learning tools and I highly recommend exploring all of these if you get the chance, but uh, there are definitely always other options if that's something you want to look into. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to just actually use the low, so I'm not going to really change anything in the UI here. But I'm going to connect this to a select and then go back to this noise and then it was the harmonic gain was just going from 0 to 2. And so this is going from like 0 to 1-ish. So I'm going to connect this to a math and change that from 0 to 1 to 0 to 2. 
Um, and maybe I even want to like turn the gain up, make it smoother. And let's see how this value does. So let's go noise and then drag the low onto the harmonic gain. Oh yeah, it's moving a little bit, but I feel like I want it to be even more intense. So let's turn that gain right up. Yeah, I like that. I also feel like I want a bit of like random movement like that. So I might turn the gain down and toggle on this kick and then connect it to a count. Now this uh, seed parameter and the noise is a ever increasing value. Um, at least I think it, I think it's like, yeah, yeah, it's just endlessly create. Uh, it's like the source of the randomness. Um, so whatever value in here is just going to generate a different bit of randomness or attempt to generate different randomness. So if I plug a count in and then set the, um, the kick to be the seed, every time there's a kick drum, it's going to do a different generation of the same parameters of noise, but of a different random seed. And yeah, there, if I turn down the volume, yeah, you can see we sort of have an interactive thing playing with the feedback. Now, if you want to change the like actual shape of yourself, maybe you want to add in a noise uh, beforehand. Again, this is going to be a really intense. Uh, maybe I don't play around with this too much, but, <laughs> but you can definitely start to get a noise like there and then apply the audio activity to, uh, you know what I could have done is I could have just done, I could have just copied this. Forgive me, forgive me. Uh, ba -ba, connect it in like that. Maybe we don't want the math. And noise is really intense. <laughs> but there you, go. you can see it's, it's a really extreme example of me. There you go, but I'm being warped in 3D space and it's, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it there for today's tutorial. A bit, a bit of a random one. But uh, I just saw so many people on my Patreon requesting this really and talking about it and trying to help each other out. So I was like, okay, this is just, I need to do a tutorial on this. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys like this. I hope this was useful to at least some of you. Uh, if you're in the situation where you haven't seen the first video and you clicked on this wanting to learn how to create the whole thing, um, feel free to leave that feedback. Maybe I can try and segment these in the future and like just create different versions for different situations i guess um and if that is the case then for the iphone one i'll do it all from scratch again but uh yeah otherwise thanks so much for watching and i will catch you in the next one see you